example of this hydration reaction, uh, we have an alkene and we have H2O, H2SO4. So this looks like we're going to um, add water. We're going to add an H and an OH across the double bond. These looks like hydration conditions. And here's where we have our alkene. Okay, notice that these are not going to be reactions of benzene pi bonds. Benzene pi bonds are not alkene pi bonds. So all the reactions we're going to be studying in this lecture um, are not relevant to benzene rings, just uh, isolated double bonds, separated double bonds. Now, what we have to decide is which carbon gets the hydrogen, which gets the OH. Um, and we could think about Markovnikov's rule. Markovnikov's rule tells us that the more stable, uh, I'm sorry, the, the carbon with the more hydrogens gets the hydrogen. And that doesn't help us here, does it? Each of these carbons has just a single hydrogen. So you can see very quickly that Markovnikov's rule is only going to get us so far. It won't help us predict every case. So we need to have a better understanding of the mechanism and the, and the foundation underneath Markovnikov's rule. And that foundation is the notion that um, in our mechanism, we want to have the most stable carbocation intermediate. So in our first step, we're going to protonate this pi bond. And that will give us a, pi, a carbocation either here or here. So where is the better carbocation? Now, how would you describe this carbocation in this position? Let's imagine the carbocation here. This is a secondary carbon. So it would be a secondary carbocation. That's not a bad one. How about? if we had the carbocation in this position. It's also secondary. So again, we're seeing that we have very similar condition, very, very similar situation. But this is not uh, just secondary. We have this benzene ring here. And what do we call the position that's next to a benzene ring? We describe that as benzylic. So a carbocation in this position would be secondary and benzylic. That's better than uh, just being secondary. So uh, we want to think about the stable carbocation. Okay, uh, we, we want to know the mechanism and think about the mechanism, what's important to it. You might want to think, well, you know, is ster are sterics important in this case? Sterics have nothing to do with, with uh, carbocation formation. You know, that's if we're trying to do a backside attack maybe. Uh, but we really want to think about what, what is the governing um, uh, thing in, in this situation. It's really about the carbocation stability. So what we want to form is the benzylic carbocation. And how do we get to the benzylic carbocation? What does that mean? We, that means we protonate in the other position. The hydrogen goes here so that the carbocation goes in the position we want. Okay, and this is resonance stabilized. Try it. That's a good exercise. Can you uh, shows the resonance stabilization of, the, of this benzylic carbocation. OK, and so once we know the carbocation that's going to be formed, now we can go to the product, hopefully without doing a complete mechanism, because where the carbocation was is where our OH group will be added. Remember, adding an H and an OH. And in this case, we'd want to put the OH on the benzylic carbon, because that would be the more stable carbocation. OK, notice I'm not showing any stereochemistry here. We did form a new chiral center, but we just know that's going to be racemic. So we could just draw them all as straight lines.